Alright, this is going to be a quick video showing how to do inverse functions on GeoGebra. So, um, let's go ahead and just start with sort of a basic kind of power function here. Let's just do y equal x squared. So, I'm going to type in y equal x squared, but I'm going to do it so it only gets the right half of the equation. So, I'm not going to worry about the negative values. So, I'm going to do it the way we learned with the if statement. So I'm typing in right now. You can't actually see what I'm typing, but you will see the result of it when it shows up over here. So there's my function. It's going to be x squared, but only when x is bigger than or equal to 0. So I did that with the if statement, and you can check at the handout to see exactly how I did that. Um, so notice here's our parabola, and there is no left half of it. It just starts off with the positive values uh, and 0, so no negative values right there. Alright, so just a couple things to notice, and I'm going to stick a point. I'm going to go here to point mode and put it directly on to our graph on that parabola. And then I'm going to go to the arrow mode so I can move that point around. So here's my point A. Over on this side, it gives me the coordinates of it. And this is just the graph of y equal x squared. So for example, if I were to put it at 2, or if I'm really close to 2, it's hard to get exactly there. but Notice when the x is 2, the y that comes out is 4, which is if we had graphed it. It's y equal x squared. Plug in 2, you get 2 squared, which is 4. If I were to plug in 3 for my x, out should come the 9. And if I drag this point up to the 3 spot, and I'm looking at over here, it says, all right, when x is 3, the y is 9, because, again, the graph is y equal x squared. Well, in order to do the inverse function, what that's going to do is switch around the input and output. So right now, the way the function normally works for f we plugged in the number 3 for x, and out came out the number 9 for the y, because we did 3 squared. What the inverse does is it reverses these. So I want to know, hmm, if I'm asking about the 9, what number would I have to put it in to get out a 3? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to type in a new point where the x and y are reversed. So I'm going to move the view window down a little bit so you can see that. I'm going to try to do that anyway. So let's see. Do, 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 scrolling down, scrolling down. OK, there we go. It's right down here. So I just realized I could have done that so you could see what I had typed in for the if statement. But too late now. Uh, let me go ahead and put in that new point. So the new point is going to be, so you start with parentheses because it's going to be a point. And I'm going to say, the first thing I want in order to switch around the, the x and y coordinates is the first coordinate is going to be the y coordinate of the point A, comma, and the next thing is going to be the x coordinate of the point A. So notice it's the reverse. Normally, x coordinate comes first and then y coordinate, but I put the y coordinate point A first and then the x coordinate point A. And I'm going to hit enter. You're going to see a new pointer here. Now I'm going to put the screen back up so you can sort of see what's going on. All right. So notice the point A had been at 3, 9. But this point B is at 9, 3. So 9 across and 3 up instead of 3 across and 9 up. It just switched it around. It switched the input and output, switched around the x and y. And in fact, as I drag the a around, let me put it back at the 2, 4. But actually, let's mentally plan out what it's going to look like. If I were to drag the point a down to this spot right here, then it would have been the x coordinate was 2, because I plugged in 2, and the y coordinate came out to be 4. It came out to be 2 squared. Well, if I switch around the x and the y, which is what b did, then instead of 2, 4, it'd be 4, 2. So that would be 4 across and 2 up, so the b should end up about right there. So let's actually see. Let's try it. So I go up here, I take my a, and I'm going to move it down so it's about at 2, 4. And sure enough, the b is right there at 4, 2. All right, so if we want to know what the entire function looks like, that's always switching every single x and every single y. All the inputs and outputs are going. Now, if I move this point fast enough, you can sort of see, oh, yeah, b is tracing a path. Um, but there's a command that does that and it's the locus command. So just to remind you how that works, I'll scoot my screen down again. There we go. And the command of what you want to type, and this will be on the handout, is locus, parentheses, and then you'd say capital B comma capital A. 
So it's imagining we're just tracing out what the B does as we move the A point around. So um, let me go ahead and raise this back up again so you can sort of see what's about to happen when I push Enter. I haven't pushed Enter yet, which is why you don't see anything. All right, well, now I'm going to push Enter and see what we get. There we go. So there's the locus B comma A. It's just tracing out what the B does as I drag the A around. So you can think of the A as tracing the path of our original function, x comma y, but then you could think of the B as tracing along this path, which is reversing the x's and y's. So in other words, this is the inverse function of this. Oops. I should actually color code it to make it maybe a little bit more clear. It's especially weird because of the way they sort of cross over each other right there. So how about I make the original function in red? So I'm going to go over here to Object Properties and just make the original function red. And um, in case you're wondering how I did that, I can scoot the screen off to the side. So you can see right here, I went to color and I clicked red. And I can do the same thing with the inverse function, but let me make it a different color. So maybe I will make that be green. So I'll come over here, Object Properties, and how about we make it green? So there you go. So the original function red, the inverse function in green. That's what it's going to look like. Um, all right, well, it turns out we sort of had to go through a lot of steps to do that. We had to create a point A. We had to reverse the X and Y. We had to do the locus command. Wouldn't it be nice if there was sort of a faster way to do it? And in fact, there is. But I wanted you to understand the sort of basic idea of what's going on first before I showed you the faster way. So to do the faster way, I'm just going to hide all this other stuff because it turns out we don't need the locus. We're not going to need the B. We don't even need the point A anymore. Let's just start off with our original graph. So here's the idea is if you think about it, what we've by reversing the E and the B, we're actually mirroring this original graph across the line y equal x. So to be able to see that, let me scroll down to the input so you can sort of see what I'm about to type. So I'm going to come over here and just type y equal x. Hit enter. And you'll notice I'll scoot up so you can see it better. So there's the line y equal x. Um, just to emphasize it's not really a separate graph on its own, I'm just going to use that as a way to help visualize the inverse. I'm going to make it be a dotted line and be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to right click, go Object Properties, and I'm going to scoot over so you can see what I'm about to do. So I'm going to go to where it says Style, and where it says Line Style here, I'm just going to change it to be dotted. And maybe make the thickness a little bit less. Alright, cool. Close that window up come back to the view we're used to, scoot back over. All right, so there's going to be our mirror. In fact, because it's going to be our mirror, if you look back over here, GeoGebra was just calling it A, so a lowercase a, but I actually want to call it something a little more meaningful, so I'm going to go to rename and just type mirror, just to remind us that's what we're about to do with it. So, all right. So pretend this is a mirror. Now if you think about it, and this is why the mirror trick works, let me put the point A and point B back on for a second. Don't really need this, I just want to emphasize. If you think about it, here's our point A that we're moving, that's on the original graph. If this were a mirror right here, this B is the mirror image of A. Just another way of thinking about it. So instead of thinking about switching the ins and outs around, think of it as being a reflection. This is the geometric way of looking about it instead of the algebraic way. So this point B, as it moves along, as A moves, B is just always moving to be a mirror image. Notice that when you touch the mirror, the B touches. When you're underneath the mirror, the B is on the other side, like it should be. It actually touches the mirror twice, once at the origin and once at 1, 1. We learned about that yesterday. All the power functions go through there. Those two points. All right, cool. So. Now we could do a like little locus thing again, but that's the old fashioned way. Let's do it as a reflection. So I don't actually need the points A and B. I was just demonstrating that's a reflection. All we really need is this mirror that we put down. So there's a command on GeoGebra that does reflections. And that command is the reflect command. So all you do is you type in reflect and you have to tell it what to reflect. So we're going to reflect the function F and then you put a comma 
and you have to tell it, well, where's the line that you're flicking across? Because it didn't have to be white box, it could have been something else. So in this case, we called it mirror. So we're going to reflect across our mirror. And I'm going to scoot the screen up so you can see what's going to happen when I push enter. So I'm going to go ahead and push enter now and see what happens. Boom. Now don't worry about this crazy formula. We haven't learned about this yet. Uh, you'll actually learn about how to do parametric curves in the far future. Um, so I'm just going to change the color on it. So I'm going to make it, uh, I know we'll do blue this time. But notice it's the same thing as the green one. In fact, if I hide the blue and put on the green, it's the same function. I can put both on there at the same time. They're exactly on top of each other. Ooh, the two make an interesting color. But let me turn off the green there so there's just the pure blue. So one way of thinking about, so the original way with algebra of thinking about the definition of inverse function is switching around the input and output. That's switching around the y's and x's, which we did as the locus command. But you can also think about it geometrically as being the mirror image across the line y equal x.